Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is Episode 7, Smoking Out Apple. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today, Michelle? I'm doing just fine. How are you? I am doing awesome. So today we've got some entertainment news to talk about. We have a new segment that we're introducing, uh, and we have some insightful picks that we're going to be going over. So the first thing that we're going to be doing today is our new Disney Detective segment. Since we seem to always have some information about Disney that we go about in the podcast here. Right. We're now going to have a section just for that since there's kinda, plenty of it. Yeah, it kind of made sense to give it its own little uh, area. Absolutely. From there, we move on to our entertainment news where we're going to discuss Apple's foray into the entertainment industry. Uh, we will also talk about some additional information uh, on Avengers Endgame as well. And uh, we have a few other things to talk about from there if we have time. And we will finish up with our insightful picks of the week. We shall. Let's get right into it. So this week's new segment, Disney Detective. I turn it over to you, Michelle. Well, thank you. So... Obviously, looking at, you know, various entertainment things, there's always stuff about Disney that that pops up. So I had suggested that we kind of bring it, you know, a new segment. Uh, So two of the things that that came up and were all over the place, all over social media, was uh, Disney World and Disneyland um, implementing some policy changes as of the 1st of May. Uh, there were actually three, two kind of being the, the major ones. First one is stroller changes. Um, so effective May 1st, strollers can be no larger than 31 inches by 52 inches. Um, and they are totally prohibiting any of the stroller wagons that seem to uh, have popped up within, you know, the last couple of years. Um As parents who have taken, you know, small children to Disney, um, you know, having a stroller obviously, you know, is very handy, you know, throughout the day. But do you need to have a big giant wagon? Yeah, that does seem a bit extreme. Now, the question I had, is this all Disney parks they're doing this at? Yes, as far as I know, it's all of Disney World and Disneyland. So it's it's all of the, the parks. Okay. And all the obviously theme parks in Disney mm-hmm. World. Yeah, yeah as well. all the parks. Now what's kind of funny is I think it was when we were last down there, we actually saw there's a outside company. So there's many outside companies that you can actually rent strollers from if you don't, you know, want to bring your own. Um and they had they were these big um uh, uh, Cinderella coaches. Oh, yes, yes. Well, that's not going to be allowed now. And yeah. those are, you know, like $400 <laughs> or more stroller. So um, so that company is now going to gonna be out of business uh, uh, doing those. Um, I know a lot of people get very um, animated when it comes to strollers and even um, the, the ACVs. Um, right the you know the scooters and and stuff that um you know they they say there's too many scooters and there's too many strollers and there's too much stroller parking but it's a theme park meant for kids so to try and not have any strollers or any scooters you're never gonna you know completely get rid of them yeah being the the disney cynic that i am i can't help but wonder is this really just a way for disney to make money off stroller rentals now well kind of but the thing is you know it, it's also the the larger strollers that they're you know that they're really targeting and the thing is you can get a double stroller you can rent a double stroller so you know from disney so obviously you can still bring a double stroller but you know what about the 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 parents that have triplets and right. have 
the triple strollers. That's where, you know, now it's like, okay, well, now I have to bring two strollers because I can't just, you know, have a, a triple stroller. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, the, the backlash um, from that. But the other, one of the other big changes is no smoking areas now are um, for all of the parks. So Disney years ago allowed smoking in the parks and then, a f you know, many years back they designated smoking areas within the parks. Now smoking areas will no longer be available in the theme parks, the water parks, ESPN uh, sports complex, and downtown Disney in California. Um, there will be some smoking areas available in Disney Springs and Disney Resort hotels. But other than that, you'd have to go out to the parking lot, I guess, um, to smoke. And I think that's actually going to cause issues because there were many people that had been posting or talking about when they first um, made Disney a non-smoking area, you were um, trash can fires were starting because people were going and smoking in the restrooms, right, right, uh, sneaking, you know, a cigarette because they didn't know where the non smoke the the smoking section was of of the park. So they were just finding any place smoking, and then you'd have a trash can fire. Well, so, I guess this solves where the smoking areas are now, right? <laughs> right. There are none. There are none. Um, so that's going to be, uh, you know, and and no va and that also includes vaping. Um, as well. So I know there are many people that are very excited about this and obviously, you know, those that, that still smoke are, are upset by this. Um, my mother smoked for years and I remember, as we've talked before, I remember when you could go to a restaurant and smoking or non-smoking was your section. Right. Um, you could even smoke on a plane, you know, back then. So I always sympathized for smokers' rights because, you know, she always admitted, you know, smoking to her. She was addicted to it. It was, you know, clearly an addiction, one that she wasn't proud of, but, you know, she had to have a cigarette every couple of hours. So... You know, over the years, she got smoked out, you know, f by certain areas and things like that. So I kind of feel for the people that that have that where they need to, to have that nicotine. You know, I wonder if, you know, having like a, a gum, you know, will that help them, right. you know, get through the day? I kind of almost not really parallel to it, but, you know why does there have to be alcohol served in a theme park? Yeah, and, and they recently went that way with Magic Kingdom, where Magic right. Kingdom was dry for the longest for time. For the longest time, and now you can get, you know, alcohol, um, you know, in the Magic Kingdom. You can obviously get it in all other parks. If you're not allowing smoking, why are you still well, allowing... Well, playing devil's advocate, someone right. having a glass of wine is not going to affect anybody else's health. True. Somebody having a cigarette affects everybody's oh, health. Oh, I, and I totally agree. But y you could still have a section, you know, in the park somewhere off to the side and, you know, have some sort of ventilation system so that the smoke isn't... Well, and I, you know, to a certain extent, I agree because the, the smoking areas that they had mm -hmm. that were designated previously were far enough away from the right. general footpaths that you didn't have right, a problem. they were never... In the way I'm curious, of anything, so. I'm curious what the push was for this. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what what prompted it. But like I said, it was you know all over the place. Um, and the other little policy change, which I'm not really sure why the reasoning behind it was, um, you're allowed to bring coolers into the parks, but effective immediately now, no loose or dry ice is permitted. So I guess if you have a cooler, it needs to be ice packs, but nothing loose. So dry ice, I could understand. Dry ice, there's a safety hazard, so I could understand that. But loose that. ice, not really sure why, because, you know, half the time, you know, you can't even say that it's a safety issue with that, because how many times do you walk past, you know, a drink stand, and they're emptying it out for the night, and there's loose ice all over... The well, floor. the only thing that I could think is if you if you look at um, 
FAA regulations and stuff like that where, all right, yeah, it looks like ice, but maybe it could be some type of okay. dangerous substance. That's the only thing that I can sure, think of. Sure, sure. We'll go but with that. But then they're allowing you to bring in sealed ice packs. Right. Which, it doesn't that's take even much... more toxic than right. The chemicals ice. in there themselves and, you yeah. know, are toxic, but it doesn't take much to empty a sealed ice pack out, fill it up, and reseal it because no one's going to look at it closely enough right. to make sure it hasn't been tampered with. Yeah, so I'm sure something prompted it, you know, Yeah. but nothing's come out yet. So It's always safety. It's, well, it's always it's, safety. It's either, it's, it's either for the children or it's for safety. Right, right. So that was the, the changes that are coming. Uh, the other interesting thing that came out with, obviously, Star Wars Galaxy Edge opening up um, uh, in the uh, end of May for... Disneyland and then later on uh, for Disney World. So Disneyland has now, they're going to be doing a virtual queuing system. So beginning June 24th, guests who wish to visit uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge will be using a virtual queuing system. So what will happen is once they get into the park and their ticket is scanned, they're going to be able to reserve a time slot to go and visit the land. So this way, um, it's going to allow guests to visit other areas of the park. When their time comes, they'll go to Galaxy's Edge, wait on a line to get in, which will hopefully be shorter <laughs> than those So that... here, get into a queue to stand on a line, <laughs> to get into a park to stand on a line to get on a ride. Huh? Well, that's how that's, Disney does things. That, um, that's Disney So for that you. they're hoping that this way it'll help manage the, the time. Um, and then when it's time, uh, for, like I said, for the guests to enter, they'll go to a shorter waiting line with other people that have their wait time. Um, but this will only go into effect June 24th and on from May 31st when Galaxy's Edge is going to be opening until June 23rd, guests will need a reservation time to get into galaxy's edge so it's so we did talk about the reservation system mm -hmm. in the previous podcast so this is in addition this queuing system is in addition to and a supplement of that reservation system after the reservation system right so the reservation system they're only doing for you know less than a month um and the reservation system as we had talked about before was if you're a resort guest you get kind of first dibs at a reservation spot and then uh, anybody outside of resort guests would be able to get some sort of reservation spot. Now they're looking to do um, the queuing system, you know, for anybody that's entering after the time. Now the interesting thing is Disney World has not come out with anything yet regarding this. So I'm guessing they're probably going to wait and see how it goes in California. Since it's opening a few months later. Right, and if... It kind of works out well in California. I could totally see them. So now, is this queuing that. system expected to be in place moving forward? Have it they didn't, set a date It didn't expiration? say that it was going to expire. So I'm guessing it'll probably be up and running up until you know they see a decline in you know in attendance. Did they mention whether or not this queuing system was tied to? park attendance or anything like that no it was basically as soon as you scanned your ticket in you'd be able to make kind of your fast pass because it's not really a fast pass but make your virtual now, this is what done through what the disney app or is there kiosks to do this it didn't it didn't mention anything yet so i'm guessing there's probably for a while there's probably going to be cast members okay. standing at the entrance when you know when you first go in to to help with everything kind of like how they've done with all of their new technology there there's usually always cast members there yeah to, to help set well the nice up. thing is is clearly they're thinking forward on this mm -hmm. expecting the turnout and trying to compensate for oh, it. absolutely because they've seen how much of a disaster you know toy story land was when when it opened how you just had this mass yeah you know mob because and that and that's the thing is that's the beauty of when Walt designed Disneyland originally, he he designed it as the spoke Distinct so that parts, you yeah. you know you would go up Main Street and you got to an area and you could go wherever you wanted to. So that's kind of the the beauty of the Magic Kingdom, 
it's the other parks that aren't are a bit of a mess there, in yeah. that same design because you go in and well you can kind of go this way that way or that way but it wasn't designed that way obviously you know anybody that's going in <laughs> you know that's where they're heading they're right. heading to to galaxy's edge right. you know they don't want to go anyplace else so hopefully this will help to alleviate is there a time limit on how long you can spend in the area nothing said you know how long you know you 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 could you know, you could stay. Because I'm curious how they're going to regulate this. Because right, and I'm sure they're trickling... not going to kick you out. But the other thing, too, is as of right now, there's only one ride that's opened. Um, there's a couple of other little guest experiences. So how long, you know, could... Well, okay, you could probably spend the whole I could day. spend the whole day there, <laughs> yes. Just immersing myself in the environment. You'd go find a nice corner, drink your blue milk, and, and, and be happy. Um I guess it, you know, that's the thing is, is it one of those things where, you know, they watch how many people leave and then they say, okay, then we send in the next group of people or, you know. Yeah. I mean, I almost pictured it as a, like a museum reserve time where mm -hmm. you're allowed in from this time to this time. Right. You get your ticket, you go in, you, you know, we know it's a, you know, an hour and a half long right, exhibit. Right. After that hour and a half, we're assuming that you're leaving at that point in time to let right. the next group. Right, right, and that's the thing is, you know, we've seen how they kind of do that with people when they have like the extra magic hours and it's only resort guests that are allowed to be able to get on the ride. You have to, you know, show your resort ID or, or your magic band gets tapped, and then you know you can get on the ride. And if you know you're not a resort guest, then you know they kind of nicely tell you right. you know to leave are they going to have something like that you know like a band that you know like oh if you're an orange band you're allowed to be here this time if you're a green band oh your time expired you really need to leave i don't know how they're gonna and that's what's kind of disturbing me is they've not given any real details right on this. and it's, very it's still vague. i guess you know everything's still kind of you know in the work so yeah. we'll see it, it should be interesting to to hear and then obviously see what you know disney world does Okay, well, that was our Disney detective segment for this week. So, Avengers Endgame, going to be out shortly, April 26th release date. Um, the latest news that came out was that this one is going to be a very long movie. <laughs> so, don't drink or eat anything. <laughs> uh, three hours, a little over three hours, they're saying. Wow. Wow. That's a long movie. Could you sit for a movie that long? It's going to be tough. My watch is going to go off multiple times telling me that, that I need to get up and move. Um, I'll have to tell it, you know, it's definitely going to think I'm sleeping. Um, I don't know. Three hours is a, a long time. What's interesting is that AMC and another movie site had released a running time of 182 minutes. And it was quickly pulled down. Disney was asked about the runtime and they've refused to confirm it so i don't know why they're keeping it a secret mm, yeah um if it is that long it will be the longest film yet produced by marvel uh the second being infinity war which was around two and a half hours and it's funny because infinity wars didn't seem like it was a long movie but it didn't seem like it was two and a half hours no it did because it flowed so well you didn't right. realize there's really was, no lulls in yeah it. and and we sat through that you know, we we didn't we didn't get up. Yeah. <laughs> and you you know, and of course, knowing Marvel, you have to stay till the very very end because Absolutely. there's something you know. Now there's no um, no estimates for what they expect for opening day weekend, but it is expected to bring in more than Infinity War, oh, which um, was yeah. two hundred fifty seven point seven million domestically Shoot. and six hundred and forty million worldwide. Wow. Um, an interesting fact that came out of this was that between Marvel, Lucas, and Pixar, Disney currently holds nine of the ten biggest openings of all time. That's pretty impressive. That is very impressive. Well, they they know how to do it, and they do it well. Yeah, they're very good. And this in fact, this year alone is going to be huge with mm -hmm. Avengers Endgame, Toy Story 4, and Star Wars Episode Nine all releasing this year. Not to mention any of the other live-action ones that they're releasing. Right, because we have Lion King, and we have yeah. Aladdin, and Dumbo, 
opened yesterday. So this so, is yeah. if you if you're looking to buy stock, Disney's a good <laughs> stock to buy right now. I think I might need to call my investment broker and add some <laughs> more uh, Disney stock to our portfolio. Uh, Avengers Endgame is directed by the Russo brothers, Anthony and Joe, who did Infinity War and the two Captain American sequels, and it opens April 26. So, I know you're not an Apple fan, clearly. <laughs> um, no, no, can't say I am. We do have some Apple products around the house that you grudgingly use, like our Apple TV. Right, I do. Uh, so, I guess you didn't watch the Apple uh, keynote on Monday, huh? No. No. Big shocker there, I know. Um, I did, and they announced a number of interesting uh, forays into the entertainment industry. Okay. Um, a number of subscription services. Just like everybody else. Exactly. Everything's going subscription. What was interesting was Apple, the previous week, had released all of their product, their hardware announcements with uh, new iPads, uh, iPad mini, uh, new AirPods, etc. New iMac is out. Um, none of that came out in the, in the keynote, which was, which was odd for Apple. They simply talked about moving to services and... And it really was a shatter, uh, sh uh, shattergun approach to it. They, hmm. They're all over the place. So they announced Apple News Plus, okay. which is um, a nine ninety nine a month service imme available immediately mm -hmm. that gives you access to over 300 magazines and newspapers, including Vogue, GQ, Time, Wall Street Journal, LA Times. Um, there were a few notable holdouts uh, that were in the news. Weeks prior to it, uh, New York Times and Washington Post wouldn't agree to the terms Apple hmm. had. Okay. But basically, you pay 10 bucks a month, and you get access to all of those. Well, and now that so many of the new services you need to, to pay to, you know, look at the content online. Everyone is behind paywall these days, you know. You know, for 10 bucks to be able to see all of them i guess you know and honestly i think that's probably the most viable offering that they mm -hmm. had which is why they had it ready to go from day one mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. um in addition to that they're going to have updates to their apple tv app now from my perspective i use my apple tvs all the time you know that we've got the digital tuners mm -hmm. we've got the channels app everything the Apple TV app is useless. If you haven't bought something from Apple or rented it from Apple, the Apple TV app so far has been useless. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't even realize that there, <laughs> that there was an Apple TV app. <laughs> yeah, because we don't, it's, cause there's Cause no we point don't, using it. Because I don't no buy point. TV through Apple. Right, right. Um, so they're launching this on other platforms now, mm -hmm. which is very unusual for Apple. I mean, it took yeah. them years to move iTunes off of their, their proprietary platform. Right. So they're coming to smart TVs from Samsung, hmm. uh, Sony, LG, and Vizio. And um, they're going to make the app available on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Hmm. Um, and ironically enough, it's not even available on Mac OS. They're bringing it to Mac OS now. <laughs> they don't um, want to share with their cousin. So what they're doing is they're taking it from what it is and they're expanding it with another service called Apple TV Channels. So just like you can go through Amazon Prime now and subscribe to HBO or Showtime and get it through your Amazon Prime, you'll be able to get it through Apple now. Okay. So they want to be your one-stop shop for all that stuff. Sure. Of course, they didn't announce any pricing for that yet <clears throat> that because they're still trying be to... Really expensive. Well, what it really means to me is they're trying to figure out how much money they can get out of people because no one's going to pay more than they're paying for Amazon Prime. Makes sense. And you get it, you know... So much more with it. Right. So... so in addition to that, they're also releasing Apple TV, which this is basically their attempt to directly compete with Netflix and Hulu for original content. Okay. Um, this was really the big push of the whole presentation because mm -hmm. they, they trotted out all the stars for it. You had Spielberg, you had Oprah, and you had mm. you know various other content creators come out for this. Mm. Uh, they're going to be offering their original TV shows, movies, documentaries that are going to be exclusive to Apple. Uh, one of which was Amazing Stories that Steven Spielberg's oh, coming okay. back with. Okay. Well, I know that they've been talking about that for, for years. 
you know, him bringing it back, but I guess there was no platform, you know, that was, was taking it. So, yeah. Okay. So that's probably the, probably the biggest thing that they're trying to bring back there. Um, and then they came out and again, they were all over the place here. So it almost reeked of desperation of them mm. trying to find where the next niche is to make money. They announced Apple Arcade, which is basically their attempt to take on someone like um, Steam, where they're going to have... Okay, all these games that you can... You'll have a monthly subscription fee. You'll have access to, right now they're saying, over 100 games with uh, that are exclusive to the Apple platform. Well, how is that going to be different than, you know, the Apple Store and going and downloading a game app? Well, because you don't buy these apps. You buy the service. Oh, okay. So this it would is, be one main service that has all the games exactly. as Exactly. Similar okay. to what Nintendo launched on the Switch, where you buy okay. the service and they give you new games every month. Okay, gotcha. Um, you can tell I'm not really a gamer. I, I totally understand. <laughs> And honestly, I don't, I don't know where they're going with this. I, I don't really see this taking off. Because mm. the games that they showed were... Not impressive games, not really mainstream games, mm -hmm. but I think everyone, they, Apple feels like everyone needs a, a content offering for television and video games and so and forth. And they just want to be in all uh, of it. And then, and the last thing that they mentioned, and it's not really entertainment news, but it's worthy of throwing out here just because it was in there. They're coming up with their own credit card. Okay. They're yeah. They're partnering with Goldman Sachs. They're rolling it into the uh, Apple Wallet and Apple mm -hmm. Pay. They're doing their own take on daily cash back for spending. Mm, okay. um, I, I I don't know. I don't know where they're going with some of this stuff, but Apple almost seems desperate in what they're trying to do now. They're just trying to be, you know, in everything, I guess. Well, and I think they're. They had the model of, all right, we're a platform that you put out music and software on, and we get 30% of it. Well, if we become the platform where you make all your purchases, we can get 1% of that and, right. and make a fortune. Uh, I think Apple basically realizes their, the hardware side of things is not making the money that they want because they're not getting the adoption rate. Mm -hmm. And they're... Clearly, Apple's not desperate for money, but they're desperate to find a new revenue mm -hmm. stream to make sure that that money keeps rolling in. You need that cash cow. So, um, I think that's all the time we have for our news at this point. Okay. So, I think our next thing is our insightful picks of the week. So, for our insightful picks of the week, I will turn it over to you first, my dear, for your pick. Why, thank you. So, my insightful pick is a new horror comedy television series that is actually based on a 2014 film of the same name called What We Do in the, Sh in the Shadows. Um, it actually just premiered on March 27th on FX. Um... It is, it's based off of the feature film, like I said, of the same name, um, that is done in a documentary style look, and it's a look into the daily, or rather a nightly, lives of four vampires who live together for hundreds of years in Staten Island. So it's, it's actually a mockumentary is, is what it is, but very funny we we happened upon the movie the actual movie from 2014 i guess maybe about a year ago a little less than that i think it was one of those we were looking through um, we basically ran out of stuff to watch <laughs> we ran out of stuff to watch and was like oh what's this and we watched the movie and we were hysterical you know watching watching this and when we saw that they were making it into a television series we we're like okay we have to watch it um so the television series is is done a little bit differently the the characters are different but it's it's funny because the vampires have lived together for centuries and it's how they deal with modern life so going to the grocery store but being dressed in gothic wear and long capes and you know, and, and trying to use their powers on, you know, cashiers who are like, what are you trying to do to me? Um, you know, and um, 
you know, their, their day-to-day life. Um, so this episode uh, dealt with, or the first episode that we saw was, um, after an unexpected visit from their Dark Lord and leader, the vampires are reminded of what they were initially tasked upon doing once they arrived in New York City over centuries ago. Um, they were supposed to dominate the new world. So basically the vampires came over, they just kind of settled in Staten Island and just kind of stayed there and never really took over. (laughs) And now the Dark Lord is like, no, we need to conquer. Um, and they, they basically know they're being filmed because they know that there's this, this camera crew, uh, following them. And, you know, it's just hysterical to to see you know the one vampire you know wanted to get glitter yeah. <laughs> so that he could sparkle like the vampires and he had from. to buy creepy paper <laughs> to decorate to buy, the attic he goes to the store and he's buying all this creepy paper and the creep paper it's creep paper no it's creepy paper <laughs> you know so we we definitely enjoyed it it's definitely one that we will uh can continue to watch and you know we we were in tears you know from laughing so hard so if good you show. need you know a good silly show to watch this is definitely one of them awesome pick so my pick this week is uh, a show that's in its second season on the history channel called nightfall uh, i'm a bit of a history buff and i specifically am, am very studied on the knights templar which is what this show is based on um i will be very gracious in saying it is loosely based (laughs) on historical accounts of the fall of the knights templar in the 14th century um they've taken a lot of creative freedom Mm. um in what is otherwise a very well documented period of history um they tend to stretch reality and history in this show um, but if you set aside the historical inaccuracies uh, and just enjoy the show as purely a work of fiction, it's actually a pretty decent show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's produced and broadcast on the History Channel, uh, though it doesn't really that doesn't lend much credence to its historical <laughs> significance. Uh, season two just started uh, with a nod to uh, so many of our childhood dreams. When they brought Luke Skywalker <laughs> himself into the show, uh, Mark Hamill has now joined the cast and is playing a leading role in the second season. Uh, this is almost uh, fitting given how much the Jedi Knights of Star Wars uh, drew from the monastic orders like the Knights Templar for their own fictional musings. Uh, History Channel, this is History Channel answer to Game of Thrones. Mm. Okay. Uh, but on an obviously tighter budget, uh, less complicated plot lines, and not nearly as much new to the insects. And no dragons? Uh, not yet, although oh. given the direction that the show oh, went last okay. season, I would not be surprised with some of the occult stuff that they're, okay. they're dealing with. Uh, it's violent, excessively at times. Uh, there's an underlying love story that abruptly ended at the end of last season. Um and that's kind of ubiquitous in TV shows these days to draw some kind of drama out of it. Uh, there's enough drama to fill the hour, though. Um, but it's served up in kind of a predictable manner. There's really nothing earth-shattering. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're given a hint of an underlying plot that's slowly revealing itself. Um, through you know various conspiracies and some crude detective work. Um, curious the direction that's going to go in the second season, though. Uh, the dialogue is interesting. Uh, it struggles to appear period authentic. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem is that so far everything has been set in France in the 14th century. So in nobody's Paris. speaking French. No one's speaking French. No one's speaking with a French accent. Mm. Everyone speaks perfect King's English. Even Mark Hamill, by the way, who squints a lot and speaks with an English accent and looks like a pirate most of the time. Um, so it's kind of hard to believe the fact that they're in France other than the fact that they keep talking about being in France. Right, right. Um, it's not a bad show. Okay. It's, it's a good show. It's a bad historical show. Okay. Um, some of the stuff, some of the concepts that they, that they introduce, they take, uh, conspiracy theories to an extreme in order to, to delve derive some plot lines from it okay 
Um, but all in all, I enjoy the show. If you watch it just as a medieval Knights Templar type thing and, and try not to get too much history out of it, it's actually pretty good. So Nightfall airs Mondays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time on the History Channel where it can be streamed from the History app or History.com website. That was my pick of the week, dear. Did you have any closing thoughts? Well, you forgot to mention that we are recording in our lovely new furnished studio. That That is true. We are. Uh, we have our cameras going today. Mm -hmm. We have our new studio today. We, we did film in here last week. Although it was kind of a makeshift arrangement, we didn't right. have all now the. We're a little bit more set up, a little. Yeah, we did not have the the kit set up properly last week. Mm -hmm. So, welcome to the new studio. Welcome to the new studio. So I think that's it for this week. I think so. We will be back next week. Uh, in the meantime, you can reach out to us on Twitter at insights underscore things. Or email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Or you can email to michelle at insightsintoentertainment.com as well. Anything else? I think that is it. All right. Well, thank you, dear, for your time. And talk to everybody next week. <laughs>